Lesson 51 is on factoring trinomials, and in Lesson 7 you learned that a trinomial, that's just a polynomial with three terms, and you already know how to factor all kinds of polynomials. You've been doing that for a long time now. In this lesson, what you'll do is cover factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c into two binomials, so that's something a little bit different. And to keep things simple for now, as you learn the a, the b, and the c coefficients, you know, a coefficient is just a number, it's not necessarily a variable, so we might have like a 3x squared plus 2x plus 7 or different things like that. So the x's stay as variables, the coefficients are typically numbers. But we'll be using coefficients that are integers. They won't have decimals. They won't have square roots for now. And they'll factor into two binomials that also have integer coefficients. So like the squared binomials from lesson 50 that you just did, trinomials are also important when working with parabolas, which are also referred to as quadratic equations. So we'll be working with those as equations that have an equal sign on there as well later on in lesson 75, 76, and also 91. So to successfully factor trinomials of that form ax squared plus bx plus c into two binomials, all you have to do is think of two numbers which when multiplied together equal the coefficient c, then when they're added together they equal b. That's all you have to do really. So there's just one part to this lesson and one thing to remember and how you factor a trinomial into two binomials so let's go ahead and do some examples here and so let's look at practice problem a there let's factor that trinomial x squared plus 5x plus 6 into two binomials so the best way to start here is just to go ahead and put some parentheses down for our two binomials and they'll be like x plus this because there's two terms that means by and x plus that or x minus that just however they work out so we could even go ahead and put an x here and an x here because we know we're going to make two binomials now think of two numbers when multiplied together equal the six there and then when added together would equal 5. What would two numbers be that, that would work out like that? Multiplied together equal 6, added together equal 5. Well, think about it. 3 and 2, those two would work, right? Now, 5 and 1, we could add those together and they would equal 6. But remember that coefficient c, that last coefficient, we need to think of two numbers when multiplied together equal that, and then when added together equal 5. So 3 and 2 work. So that's all we do. We just say x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now we could have said x plus 2 times x plus 3. We could have done it that way as well. The order of the binomials does not matter. But positive 3 and positive 2 work. And now we can check our work on that. We can expand that out just to make sure. So take that x on the left, multiply it by x plus 2, and then take the 3, multiply it by x plus 2, and let's just see if this really does work. x squared plus 2x plus 3 times x is 3x plus 6. So do you see like you could add those two together and that would be 5x? That would get us back to the original trinomial of x squared plus 5x plus 6. And so that also gives us confidence that we did this right and that we did factor that correctly into two binomials. So again, that's an important skill to be able to do in Algebra 1 that you might consider that kind of a one of those rite of passage type of lessons type of concepts that we're doing right now and factoring a trinomial into two binomials. The application of this you'll see later so don't worry so much about that and wonder why do I have to do this or whatever. There's an application that will come later. Just get familiar with the algorithm, the set of steps that you need to do in order to take a trinomial and factor that into two binomials. So let's look at B x squared plus 2x minus 3. Think of two numbers when multiplied together would equal a negative 3. So that could be a negative 1 
and a positive 3, or it could be a 1 and a negative 3, right? Either way, we could multiply those two together to get negative 3. But adding them together, we need to get a positive 2. So only this set would work for that, right? Because minus 1 plus 3 is a positive 2. The other one would give us a negative 2, so that doesn't work. So that's all we have to do to factor that. We just say x minus 1 times x plus 3. And we could have said x plus 3 times x minus 1. The order of those does not matter. We can expand this out to make sure that we did it right. We can say x times x plus 3 minus 1 times x plus 3. And so we'll have x squared plus 3x minus 1 times x is minus x. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. Do you see how those two terms in the middle there would add up to a 2x? That would get us back to the original trinomial of x squared plus 2x minus 3. So that gives us confidence that we factored that correctly. And x minus 1 times x plus 3 is correct. Let's do another one. C, x squared plus 10x plus 25. Think of two numbers when multiplied together would equal 25. And so 25 times 1, 5 times 5, those work, right? Then which one, though, added together would give you a 10? So we can write that as x plus 5 times x plus 5. And we could even write that in a more simplified format by just saying x plus 5 twice. If we want to say we're multiplying the same thing twice, we put a squared, right? So if it was 6 times 6, we could say 6 squared. Same thing with x plus 5 times x plus 5. We can write it x plus 5 quantity squared. Again, we can check our work to make sure this really does work out the way we think it does or should. And so we'd have x squared plus 5x plus 5 times x is another 5x plus 5 times 5 is 25. We can see how those two terms in the middle there would add up to 10x. And that would get us back to the original trinomial. So x plus 5 squared is correct. Now, if you get this, if you are understanding this pattern, and you want to go ahead and try to do the rest of those on your own, feel free to do that. And then you can just fast forward to the answers. If you got them right, great. If not, rewind and listen to the explanation. So D, let's move on to that. Think of two numbers when multiplied together would equal a positive 8. And then when added together would equal a negative 6. So multiplied together, we could have an 8 times 1. We could have a 4 times 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, but we need a minus 6 when we add them together. So a minus 4 times a minus 2 would work, though, right? x minus 4 times x minus 2. And of course, x minus 2 first, then times x minus 4. That also works. We won't expand back out to check our work on these. We'll assume that we did that correctly. And we'll do that with E and F as well. So again, think of two numbers. Multiplied together, that would be a negative 21. Added together, you get a negative 4. Well, a negative 7 times a positive 3, that would give us a negative 21. And a negative 7 plus 3, that would give a negative 4. So that's what it would be, x minus 7 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 times x minus 7. x plus 7 times x minus 3, that would not work, because that would give us a plus 4 for a coefficient of x instead of a minus 4. f, think of two numbers multiplied together, give you a 9, positive 9, added together, give a negative 6. Well, an x minus 3 times an x minus 3, that would work, right? Because negative 3 times negative 3, that's positive 9. 
negative 3 plus negative 3, that's a negative 6. So that's what it would be, and we can simplify that further because we have the same binomial twice, just like we did in C, we can just say x minus 3 squared. So all of these trinomials that you'll be working on right now, factoring them into two binomials, they'll all have integer coefficients, and the binomials also will have integers in them. No decimals, no square root signs. Think of two numbers in that format, ax squared plus bx plus c. When multiplied together, give you c. When added together, give you b and that's how you factor into those two binomials and you know what to put in for the coefficients in the binomials as well. Okay, well that's all for lesson 51.